Oh. This is the coolest thing we've ever got to do. Man. Fuck you, Tim. Yeah. Hands your face. Fuck This poem is called Dead Ducks and Bubblegum. He told me that at the moment of death, the forward corpse becomes exactly two ounces lighter. It is said that this is due to the soul leaving the body. I do not believe him because I know a soul weighs a hell of a lot more than that. And if my body is a temple, then it's only religious practice, it's human sacrifice. And tonight, I can't help but wonder if I keep knocking death's number while well, that wishing well change roll over into just one ticket I can ride into the light on that black horse named Release. Well, I'm, not while I'm still measuring the weight in hourglasses of milligrams and fluid ounces, pound for pound. I'm the toughest motherfucker you have ever seen when it comes to giving up. Like when we climbed up that waterfall and he said, kid, underneath all that pain in your gut, you know you love her. I looked him in the eye and said, yeah, but for the first time in my life, I don't think that's going to be enough. And now I'm just a mess, like a dust storm of dead ducks and bubble gum, fucking my own mind into psychedelic clarity and using this bloodlust sweat to waterboard these demons while friction from crooked ass railroads spinning on a spinning on a track out of control is is lighting fire underneath my fingernails. And is lighting fire underneath my fingernails and blowing smoke so far up my ass. All my lungs can do is hate and give me the ball hair it takes to tear into this page with all the honesty of an epitaph that reads. Yeah, yeah. The last three people that told me they never wanted to hurt me were the last three people that made me want to fucking kill myself. So yeah! maybe, maybe I've got a few fucking trust issues, Jack, but you better believe that my engine's still red hot enough to peel back these target practice sheets and look for the one with a single bullet hole in the chest that whispers true love's aim is always dead on. <laughs> and I'm back with a vengeance this time. And yeah, I know Cinderella's story's a little bit boring, so I'm turning this into my shot at radio play. Broadcasting at 150 miles per hour, both my arms out the window screaming, I got 99 problems and a bitch is every single one. And the suicidal tendencies of my frequencies ain't cutting loose until I redefine your idea of rage. And I am chomping at the bit like a three-headed pit bull at the end of his leash, drooling on that shiny part of your shoes. Yelling, don't blame the breed, blame the cage. And I'm about 77 shallow cuts away from showing you exactly how not afraid of this world I really am. A red feather thief about ready to cough up his last immortal breath, but not before I kill off a couple bad habits or at least a couple brain cells trying because it's easier to play shadow games with my memory than it is to accept that I'm tired. I'm tired of the thunderclouds waiting underneath their eyes and I'm tired of the lightning soaked shit storm that follows us realizing our bright purple electric potential and I'm tired of the physical translation of I love you being a goddamn knife fight. And I'm tired, of fitting, I'm tired of scratching excuses wide enough to fit the loopholes and the perfection of the perfect woman. But mostly, I'm tired of every time I roll myself up like a cigarette inside muzzles and bandages without realizing it's my job to bleed. It's my job to scream. It's my job to show y'all what poetry really means. Because you can't bottle this up. If you could, it would sound a lot like an old soul meeting a brand new reason to live. Or a passive aggressive manic depressive inhalation of the night, but me, I'm cutting ties with my baggage, using this dull blade named Chaos Eater, and hopping the last flight out of this town on the back of that yellow bird into something that looks like a sunset, and is every bit as endless. Like if my story is worth telling, then my hero sure as hell is worth ending.